Welcome to this special edition of the 30 minute workout series. My name is Jeff Bartles and in today's session, we're going to be looking at some AutoCAD tips, tricks, and shortcuts. If you're unfamiliar with the 30 minute workout concept, we put these sessions together as a way of giving us an opportunity to demonstrate tools and features that aren't covered during traditional training courses. Our goal with these sessions is to have an opportunity to talk about some of these tools to help shorten up the learning curve for folks and allow them to make the most of their Autodesk investment. We do have some ground rules with the sessions. First of all, the examples that we show very often can be abstract in nature, and we do that on purpose. This way we can focus solely on how a tool works. Once you understand how the tool works, you can apply it in whatever situation works best for you. These sessions are always recorded, so you don't have to worry about taking notes. Anyone who has registered for the session will get access to the recording. If you have questions during the session, go ahead and put those in the Q&A pane. We will answer those as the session progresses. In the event we don't get to all of the questions by the end of the session, we will get back to you with an answer. As far as the agenda goes for today, we're going to be talking about a lot of things. When I started setting the agenda, I started asking myself, you know, if I had a half an hour to talk about AutoCAD features that I can't live without, you know, what would they be? And as I started writing these things down, I quickly got to about eight pages worth of content. So what I did was I organized things into four major categories. We're going to be talking about as many things as possible today. I've got them organized into the interface category, maybe looking at traditional commands using an untraditional approach. We'll also be looking at some new commands. The, my goal with this session is to show you some things, some tips and tricks that maybe you haven't seen before. And then at the end of the session, I'm going to be sharing some additional resources. As always, this is going to be a PowerPoint free zone. We'll be working live in the application for the duration of our time together today. Okay, now that our housekeeping is done, let me drop out of this. If you look at the top of the screen, you can see that I am working in AutoCAD 2022 today, since this is an AutoCAD tips and tricks session. Having said that, if you are a Civil 3D user, everything that we look at here today will apply in Civil 3D as well, because Civil 3D is built on top of AutoCAD. One more thing, even though I'm using the 2022 version, if you are using a slightly older version, not a problem. The majority of the things, in fact, all of the things that we look at today have been around for a few years. So everything should work just fine for you. So the first tip, I'm going to select some items here. If you select items and then click the top hotspot on the view cube, it will focus your attention on those items. We're going to talk about some interface items first, and we're going to talk about the quick access toolbar. Quick access toolbar is located here at the top of the screen. Quick access toolbar contains tools that are so important that we have to have them on screen all the time. There are some favorites in here. There's the new command, open, save, save as. Did you know if you click this fly out at the end of the quick access toolbar, we can see toggles that control the display of the items that are currently here. Notice there are additional commands that we can add to the toolbar right from this menu. If you're a Civil 3D user, you probably notice that there's no workspace selector up here. That's because it happens to be turned off. If I wanted to turn that on, I could click to bring that up. And now you'll see that this function is very similar to how we have it in Civil 3D. Having said that, we really don't need the workspace selector up here. In Civil 3D and AutoCAD, there is also a gear down here in the lower right corner. If I open that up, I can select workspaces from here as well. Let's look at how we can turn that workspace item off. I'm going to expand that menu again, and I will click to remove this toggle. Now, before I do that, let me mention that the list of items that we see here is obviously not a comprehensive list of all of the tools available in the application. So when I close that, let's look at how we can add additional tools to the quick access toolbar. All you have to do is right click on a command in the ribbon. And in the right click menu, there's an option here, add to quick access toolbar. So I just added the circle command to the quick access toolbar, not only the circle command itself, but it also brought the fly, the fly out along as well. Very easy for me to uh, add those. And if, you know, I can add any command I want up there and have it available on screen all the time. If you're like me, once you add items to the quick access toolbar, you may be asking yourself, how can you remove them from that? If I right click on the toolbar, I can choose remove. So very easy. Now we can add not just commands, we can also add interface items. There's a very popular tool here on the ribbon. It's our layer dropdown. Very often we use this to set our current layer or we can select an object and change the layer that it's sitting on. Really nice tool. However, if I jump to a different tab and I want to use that tool, I've got to come back to the home tab to find it. If, however, I right click on that interface item, notice I can add this to the quick access toolbar as well. So now, Anytime I need this tool, I can come up here and access it from the top of the screen. I'm going to help go ahead and press escape, and then we'll put things back the way they were. I'm going to right click on this and choose remove from quick access toolbar to take that away. 
So that is the Quick Access Toolbar. Let's pan this over and we'll talk a little bit about the application menu. The application menu is this letter in the upper left corner. If I click to expand this, in the menu we'll find many of the same commands that we also find in the Quick Access Toolbar. I show you this menu to show you the search area at the top of the screen. We can use this to search for commands. As an example, I'm going to type plot. When I do, AutoCAD or Civil 3D will show you every place in the interface where that command can be found. And if I roll my mouse wheel down, you can see not only is it going to show me where plot can be found, but it'll show me where any command associated with plot is located. And if I keep scrolling down, you can see it'll find commands that are even loosely associated with plot. Let's scroll back up. Based on what we see here, we can see the plot command can be found in the Quick Access Toolbar. There it is right there. It can also be found in the application menu. We saw that a second ago when we expanded this. And then plot is also located in the ribbon on the output tab in the plot panel. Now, if you want to, you can take and navigate to those locations, but it's nice to know that these items in the list actually work as hyperlinks as well. If I click, I can launch the command from here. Let's close this. I show you that because as we run through the session today, I may talk about commands and rather than having to remember which tab and which panel I'm going to, to to find the icon, I'll give you the command and then you can use that feature that we just looked at to locate the icon if you want it. Let's pan this over. We'll talk for a second about palette management. I am a single monitor kind of person, but still the palettes in Civil 3D and AutoCAD are quite large. I like to free up as much real estate as possible for my drawing. Let's look at how we can do that. One palette that I use frequently is the Properties palette. And in the Civil 3D platform, typically it's found on the Home tab over here on the left side. Since we're in AutoCAD today, I'm going to go to the View ribbon tab and we'll find the Palettes panel here, very similar. To turn on the Properties palette, I can click the icon to toggle that on. Let's go back to Home. Another way we can access this palette is by pressing Control 1. That will turn it on and off. So I like to use this palette for everything, whether it's AutoCAD or Civil 3D. Why go to 10 different dialog boxes when I can select an object and I can change its properties using a single dialog box? As an example, I'll select this circle and I'll change the radius of that circle to 0.25. So I like having this palette on screen all the time. What I'm going to do is right click on this vertical bar. This is called the mast. From here, I could choose anchor left or anchor right, depending on the side of the screen you want to use. I'll choose Anchor Left. When I do, you can see it shoves that palette over into the margin. Now, if I select an object, I can simply come over and hover over the margin to open this up. I can then make a change. Let's set that radius back to 0.5. When I'm finished, I move away. It collapses, and I've got all my screen real estate again. Now I can take this step a little bit further. If I right-click on the margin, I can choose Icons Only. This will reduce the palette down to a single icon in the interface. That means if I select an object now, I can just come over and hover over this icon, get access to the tool. Maybe we'll change the rotation of this text to zero. When I'm finished with my business, I can move away and the palette collapses. I'm doing this with the Properties palette, but you can do it with any palette in the Civil 3D or AutoCAD environment. If I open the Layer Properties, for instance, this is a palette. I'm going to right-click on this and say Anchor Left or right. Remember, we could do this on either side of the screen. We'll push that over. I could type uh, XREF. Our External References Manager is a palette. I'm going to right-click on this and choose Anchor Left. Now I've got a ton of functionality. I could add more things if I want, but I've got a ton of functionality available here just hovering over these individual icons. All right, let's slide this over and we'll talk for a second about selection cycling. When you install Civil 3D or AutoCAD, very often the selection cycling feature is turned off, and in some cases it's kind of hidden. Let's look at where we can turn it on. In the lower right corner of the screen is an icon that allows us to do some customization. It's affectionately known as the hamburger. I'm going to click this, and when it pops up, you can see toggles that show you all of the tools that are visible down here in the status bar. So using this, we can turn various items down at the bottom of the screen on and off. In the list, I can see an item here called Selection Cycling. I'm going to click to select that. And each time I toggle this, you can see the, see the thing open up. There's the icon for it right there. Once I enable the icon down there in the interface, I'm going to click to close that menu. And then just like the other items down here, you can click this to toggle the feature on and off. I'm going to turn it off momentarily, and then we'll explore how this works. I'm going to start by 
I'm stacking up these rectangles. I'm going to use the move command here for a second. I'll select this rectangle, pick it up from here and place it here. I'll tap my space bar to relaunch the move command. Space bar or the enter key can be used to relaunch the previous command. Now that I've stacked those up, let's assume that I wanted to move the green box or the green square. If I come up and launch the move command or any command that asks me to select objects, when I go to click here, it is always going to grab the one on top, which makes it challenging in the event I've got multiple objects sitting on top of each other. That's where the selection cycling comes into play. I'm going to come down and turn that feature on. Control W is the toggle that you can use, another alternate way to turn that on and off. When selection cycling is turned on, I can launch the move command or any command that's going to ask me to select objects. Now, when I put my cursor over this pile, if you will, you can see the icon changes. And when I click, it'll say, well, hey, these are all the items that we found under your cursor. Pick the one you want. I'm going to grab the green one in this case and press enter. And I'll pick it up from the end point here. And maybe we'll put it over here. Maybe I'd like to offset the yellow rectangle. I'll come up and launch the offset command. My distance, I'll type 0.15. Which object do I want to offset? I'll come over here and click. Since selection cycling is on, it finds all the objects under my cursor. I will grab the yellow one and we'll offset this to the outside. So selection cycling, great tool for making selections when you have multiple objects in the same vicinity. Let's come down and turn that off. Let's talk about an object snap that doesn't get a lot of air time. That is from, I like to use the from object snap when I'm placing details on a, on a detail sheet for a set of construction drawings. Works great for that. From allows you to place objects based on a point other than where you picked it up from. Let me show you what I mean. I've got a rectangle here. Let's say this represents the boundary of a detail. Maybe I'd like to uh, copy this to the right. And ultimately, I'd like to place it such that it's 0.25 away from this first one. Let's launch the copy command and I will select this rectangle. Enter. I'll pick it up from this corner. You can see where I'm holding it from. Well, now to get that 0.25 away, I might have to create some sketch geometry or something like that. In fact, I can do it with this object snap instead. I'm going to shift right click and I will say from. I would like to copy this from the end point here. Now it's like I picked it up from that location. I will then come down and turn on my ortho, or I could tap F8 to, to do that. And I can then drag the right and I'll type 0.25 my distance. Now I'm still in the command. Maybe I'd like to copy one down below a distance of 0.25. Let's shift right click and we'll say from. I'd like to create a copy from this lower left corner. My ortho is still locked. I'll pull this down and type 0.25 and press enter. And then I'll press escape when I'm finished. That is the from object snap. Let's look at some hatch options. Maybe I'd like to hatch the area inside this boundary. I'll come up and launch the hatch command. And I would like to hatch this using a brick pattern. So in the contextual ribbon, I'll open up the pattern menu and I'll come down and find one of these patterns that starts with AR. The AR represents architectural. I'll choose this one, architectural brick standard. I'll select that pattern and then I will click inside this shape. Now, when I do, since these are architectural, they are scaled for architectural use. So from a civil perspective, if this was a civil drawing, this pattern is going to be quite large. I need to make this smaller. So in the contextual ribbon, I'm going to change this to 0.1 and I'll press enter. And then I will click the check or I can press enter it again to get out of the command. Now, this looks nice. However, if we look at it closely, if this was to represent the elevation view of a wall or the outside of a building, chances are the bottom course of bricks wouldn't be this small. When you create hatch in the AutoCAD platform, the hatch is based on the coordinates of your origin, zero, zero. So if I would like to have this bottom course of bricks look correct, all I have to do is move my origin to the bottom left corner of this object. Now I could do that at the point I create the hatch or I can edit this one. If I select the hatch, it brings up the contextual ribbon from here. I could just choose set origin and I can grab the lower left corner. The hatch is now built from that corner and I'll go ahead and press enter when I'm finished. This is a great feature to use when you are working with state plane coordinates. If you've ever placed concrete hatch and you're working with state plane and you're out in the millions, since that hatch pattern is being essentially drawn from the zero zero coordinate, sometimes hatch can look broken or the endpoints don't touch. How do we correct that? All we have to do is move the hatch origin closer to the object or on the object itself.
here's another hatch option. Maybe I would like to hatch the area inside these individual line segments. If I launch the hatch command, I'm going to go with a solid fill hatch in this case. We'll click solid. And then typically default when we go to hatch, it's pick points. If I move my cursor inside this area, that's almost what I want. The problem is I've got a bunch of circles that are blocking my, my path there. If we look in the upper left corner, you can see that I can place hatch using the pick points option or select objects. Unfortunately, neither of these work very well. Select objects would only work if I had a nice closed object that I could click on. In this case, I don't have that. I show you that to show you this. If I expand the boundaries panel, notice right here for the boundary set, this says use current viewport. It's essentially looking at everything in the file. If I come over and click this icon, I can choose a new boundary set. And then the objects that I select is essentially, I'm, I'm telling AutoCAD, these are the only objects you're allowed to see when I do pick points. I'll grab those four objects, and now when I place my cursor in here, you can see that it, it finds that very quickly. I'm going to click to select that location, and then we'll use the contextual ribbon here to put a different color on that. When I'm finished, I'll close. Okay, this is a great tool to use in the event you've got a drawing that has thousands and thousands of entities. Sometimes when we try and do a pick points with Hatch, it can try and examine all of those entities and it can be a drag on performance. So this can be a quicker way to place Hatch in drawings like that. Just select the boundaries at a time. Let's talk about the geometric calculator. Phenomenal tool. I can't live without it. Used to have a calculator on my desk. Don't have to have that so much anymore because we can let the application do the calculating for us. As an example, I'm going to type CAL here at the command line for calculator. When I do, you can see it says expression. I can now type in an expression. I'll type 2 plus 2, for instance. When I press enter, we can see the answer there is 4. You can type in expressions that are as simple or as complex as you want. The nice thing about this calculator is that you can launch it within another command. As an example, maybe I would like to draw a circle that is half the diameter of this one. I'll launch the circle command. I'll pick a point on screen. I will come down and choose diameter. Now, what's my diameter? Apostrophe CAL. The apostrophe allows us to run the calculator transparently within the current command. When I hit enter, I can see my ability to enter the expression. So I'll type 1.34 divided by 2. And when I press enter, you can see it calculates that value and it completes the circle. If I was to put a quick dimension on there, we can see that's half the diameter. Maybe I would like to scale this rectangular shape such that its sides equal 1.34. I'm going to come up and launch scale. I'll select the shape and press enter. We'll scale it from the lower left corner. Now, what's my scale factor? I don't know. Let's let the computer figure it out. Apostrophe CAL. Enter. What's my expression? 1.34 divided by 1.5. I'll press enter. You can see that it was scaled perfectly. In fact, if we look at the command line, you can see that any time you use the geometric calculator, it is calculating the value to 14 spaces to the right of the decimal. That is as accurate as it gets. Now we can use, with the geometric calculator, we can use text or numbers, if you will. We can also use object snaps. So we can use this to calculate locations in space. Maybe I would like to place a circle that is centrally located between these three points. I'm sure you'll agree that each of these, from an object snap perspective, could be looked at as either an endpoint or an intersection. So just to demonstrate, I'll use one of each during, this, during my expression. To place a circle centrally located, I will launch the circle command. And then it says, where do you want to place it? We'll let the computer figure it out. Apostrophe C-A-L. Expression. I'll type end, or I'll type open bracket first. End plus end plus I-N-T. We'll do an intersection. So I'd like to take those three coordinates, close bracket, so those three uh, object snaps, and take that quantity divided by three. And I'll press enter. Now it's saying, okay, which object snap represents your endpoint? I'll click this one. Which object snap represents your next endpoint? I'll pick this one. Which object snap represents your intersection? I'll pick this one. It adds those three coordinates together and divides by three. We can do something similar if I just wanted to find the center of this square. I could draw a circle. Where do I want to draw that from? Apostrophe CAL. What's my expression? We'll take the quantity of the endpoint object snap plus the other endpoint object snap divided by two. And then I will click this endpoint and this one to find the center. If you've been using AutoCAD or Civil 3D for a while, you may have noticed if I shift right click, 
we have an object snap that will do that as well, midpoint between two points. In addition to using object snaps, the geometric calculator also has predefined functions. Let's look at one of those. Here I have a line segment that's been offset a certain distance. I don't even know what this distance is. Maybe I'd like to offset this line the same distance that these two lines are apart. I'll try that. We'll go to offset. What's my offset distance? Apostrophe CAL. My expression, I'll type DEE, -E, stands for distance between two endpoints. I'll click this endpoint and this one. It calculated that distance to 14 spaces to the right of the decimal. I can now select the object I'd like to offset and offset at that distance. These two objects have the exact same offset as these two. We can even use these functions in an expression. For example, I've got two segments here. Maybe I'd like to offset this and find the center line. I'm going to go back into the offset command. What's my distance? Apostrophe CAL, expression DEE -E divided by 2. Enter. I'll pick this endpoint and this one. It finds the distance, divides it by 2. I can now select my object and choose the side to offset. I just created a perfect center line for that without having to take any measurements or create sketch geometry. Another function that I use frequently is the RAD function. RAD will allow you to extract a radius from an existing arc, polyline, or circle. As an example, maybe I'd like to fill it, these two lines, using the same radius as this circle. I'll launch the fillet command. I'll come down and choose radius. What's my radius? Apostrophe CAL. What's the expression? RAD for radius. I'll press enter, and then I will click the object to extract the radius. It pulls that to 14 spaces to the right of the decimal. I will then click these two objects to apply my fillet. I could include that rad function into an expression as well. Now, we did an entire 30 minute workout just on the geometric calculator. In the description for this video will be a hyperlink to that session if you're interested in more about this particular feature. Let me drag this over. Want to make sure you're aware that you can enter expressions in your dialog boxes. As an example here, let's go to annotate and I'll choose the text style dialog box. So virtually any place that you have the opportunity to enter a number in Civil 3D or AutoCAD, you can enter an expression. Here's the syntax that we would use. Let's say equals one divided by 12. Maybe I'm calculating the height of one inch, for instance. Equals one divided by 12, and then all I have to do is press Alt Enter to complete that calculation. Okay, we'll work with virtually any numeric dialog box. So keep that in mind. No sense doing the manual calculations for that. Let's talk about some selection options. We'll look at select similar. Here, if I hover, you can see I have a polyline. And this polyline was drawn on layer DET2. Let me just hover over this. Now it was drawn on layer center. For some reason, my tooltip's not popping up at the moment. So I've got a polyline drawn on layer center. I've also got some additional polylines that were drawn on that same layer. I would like to select all the polylines on that layer. If I select one of these objects and right click, in the menu is an option here called Select Similar. When I choose that, you can see that it very quickly selects all similar objects. Now, how similar do they have to be? Let's look at this. Select Similar is actually a standalone command. I'll type Select Similar down here at the command line, and you can see that you can access the settings for this. If I choose settings, you can see this is how similar they have to be. If I select the object, it's, it's going to look at that object type. So all polylines that are on that layer that have the same color, that's how mine is currently set. And you can go through and dial this up to whatever you like. I'm going to click OK. So since I'm also looking at color, I could force these two just for the sake of science here. I'll just force these two to be red. And that would mean if I do a select similar now, if I select this object and right click and choose select similar, it's only going to find these two. These two are polylines that are on that layer um, that have the, the same color. They're, they're uh, by layer. These are unique that they're forced to be red. That is the select similar option. I did that with polylines, but you could do it with any object. When the select similar feature came out, there was another selection or another creation method that was offered at the same time. It didn't get as much airplay. That is called Add Selected. Not the best name. Best name for that would have been Create Similar, because that's what you do. You select an object, and I want to create an object similar to this one. On my screen here, I've got a dimension. And this particular dimension is made from a specific dimension style. It's sitting on a, a specific layer. You can see that 
I've got layer 0 set here currently. If I select this object, we can see it's on layer DET6, I'd like to create another object just like it. If I right click, I can come down and choose Add Selected, otherwise known as Create Similar. I'll choose that, and not only did it set the layer for me, it launched the appropriate command for me. All I have to do is click the two endpoints, and I just created a dimension that's got the exact same properties as the one that I selected. And we could do this with anything. I could select this polyline, for instance. Right click, Add Selected, i.e. Create Similar. It launched the polyline command for me, and now the polyline that I'm drawing happens to be on that same center layer, and it's forced to be red, just like the original. Let's drag this over. We'll talk about the ability to double-click edit. You're probably aware if we double-click on text, we can edit that. We've been able to do this for a while in the AutoCAD platform. I show you that just to let you know that there are other places where we can double-click edit. Dimensions is one. This is something that in the last few years we've been able to do, but prior to that it wasn't quite so easy. As an example, if I double-click on this dimension, you can see I get access to that dimension text. Now, this is an associative dimension, so I don't want to override that number. I'm just going to use my arrow key to get to the end of the line there, and I'll press Enter, and then I'll type maybe a TYP for typical, or ROW for right away, or something like that. Very easily, I can add a prefix or a suffix to my dimensions just by double-clicking on them. I can edit blocks with the double-click option. I've got a north arrow here. If I double-click on that, now I only have one block in this file, but you can see it selects that block from the list, and if I click OK, it'll take me right into the block editor. Okay, very quick way to edit blocks. I can edit polylines with double-click. I've got a polyline here. If I double-click, you can see down at the command line that it launched the p-edit command. Now, if I select this for just a second, notice that this polyline is sitting on a layer called hidden. That hidden layer has a hidden line type assigned to it. Notice the line type is not displaying on this object. I'm going to fix that. I will double-click on this to launch the p-edit command. And then there is a feature under p-edit called line type generation. If I select that and then enable it by clicking on, it will force that line type uh, to span the entire object regardless of the length of the individual segments. So that is double-click editing. Now let's talk about the oops command. This is a good uh, command that you can protect yourself from yourself. If you've ever done this before, maybe you've zoomed in and you've been doing some close-up work in a file, for instance, and then maybe you accidentally did something, didn't realize it, I del just deleted that shape. Let's say that's a property line. Maybe I didn't even notice that I did that. And then I continue working in here. I continue generating content. I, um, you know, draw some line segments. And at some point, when I zoom back out, I realize, oh no, my, my boundary's gone. Well, what happens then? Well, I, I could go through the undo history until it comes back, but then I lost everything I did, you know, for the last 10 minutes or however long I've been drawing since it was deleted. There is a command called oops. If I type oops and press enter, oops will restore the last object that was deleted or erased. So that's something you can try in the event you have an issue. Isolate objects. This is a phenomenal command. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Works fantastic in AutoCAD and Civil 3D. This is how you can simplify what you see on screen. As we get to more complicated designs, we start having more entities and things like that. If I come down to the lower right corner, we'll find the Isolate Objects button. If I click that, I can choose Isolate Objects, and then I can select the objects we'll say that maybe I'm going to be working on. And it doesn't matter what layer. Okay, I'll select the ones I'm interested in. When I press Enter, it will isolate just those objects on the screen, and that is independent of the layer settings. So, very, very nice way that I can get this down to the, just the things I'm working on. You can't do this with save layer states. Now, this is object-based and not layer-based. Now I can take and work, make adjustments, do what I need to do, and then when I'm finished, you can see this icon is lit up, showing us that I have objects that are isolated. If I click that, I can choose End Object Isolation. I can also choose to hide additional objects if I want to. Let me choose End Object Isolation. Now, you don't have to worry about that particular tool. If you, if you were to save the drawing while things were isolated, it will revert back to the original unisolated state. Let's drag this over. And we'll talk about one more. We are dangerously close to the top of the hour here. Let's talk about who has. If you are working in a collaborative environment and you're sharing drawings that are on a server, one of the things you may run into is you may open a drawing and it may come up and say, this is read-only. Why is it read-only? Because somebody else is in it. It doesn't tell you who's in it, but it's just saying, hey, you can't work on this. Somebody else has got access to it. 
And what do you do? You end up starting having to make phone calls. Are you in my file? Who's in the file? I need to work on this file. There is a command in the AutoCAD platform, also works in Civil 3D, called Who Has. If I type Who Has and hit Enter, this feature works just like the Open command. So I would navigate my server to the particular drawing that I'm interested in. I'm going to select the drawing that I'm currently in, by the way. We'll select this, and when I click Open, it'll tell you who's in the drawing, and I can see the name of their computer as well, and I can see how long they've been in the file, just in case somebody's camping out in there. At least now I know I can make a phone call. Hey, do you really need that file? Can you get out of that? I've got to continue working. Okay, let me drop back out to my slides here. We talked about a bunch of things today. I hope that during our session, we ran across some things that maybe you hadn't seen before. Let me go to my additional resources here for a second. If you're not familiar with uh, what we do, we do have a Civil Immersion blog. I will have the link for that down in the description for this video. This is where we post a lot of the content, the tutorial content that we post online on a regular basis. Each of us that is responsible for the Civil Immersion blog has our own YouTube channel where we post hundreds and hundreds of videos, how-to videos that show folks how they can take advantage of the different tools that Autodesk offers for civil infrastructure. This is the URL for my YouTube channel. I'll have that down in the description. And then if, you're, if you like the 30-minute workout concept, I will leave a link to the playlist such that you can access all of the prior recordings. With that, let me say that in the event we haven't gotten to all the questions at this point, we will get back to you with an answer. On behalf of uh, Jerry Bartles, Angel Espinosa, Alan Gilbert, and myself, I want to say thank you so much for attending these sessions. We, we really hope that you find value in them, and we look forward to seeing you guys again at the next 30-minute workout. Thanks.